You know what time it is? It's time to get in the game with your host, Sintan J. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome to Get in the Game. I am your host, the Tara J. We are here live in studio. And today is a very special show for me because you guys know how passionate I am about sports and fitness and health and wellness. And this evening, live, our very own, she's going to be my personal health coach for this <laughs> evening, and yours as well. And as you can see, tons of examples, because one thing I think we both um, been asked, Diane, during this quarantine time is people are going crazy. Yeah, yes. they don't know what to eat, how to eat. Um, they don't know anything. So we've got to we've got to give them what we can. And so you um, have years of experience. Tell us how you kind of got involved in this and why you're so passionate about health. Yes. Hi everyone. I'm Diana. Um, I'm a wellness coach. Really happy to be here with my girls, DC. Yeah. And um, so just a little snippet about how I got into this. I had my own personal weight struggles um, growing up. And my mom uh, was, she's a dietitian. And so it's like, okay, you have a daughter who is, you know, overweight and then you're not really doing anything. So um, that's really how I got into it. My, really, my mom being in the fitness industry it led me to that, to that passion. Awesome. Yeah, we know you're passionate about. We work together. So yes. we work together. We work out together. We eat together. We eat together. We snack together. We snack, and I'm yep. excited because she brought some of my favorite snacks. But <laughs> this show is about you guys. So don't forget, follow us live right now on Facebook because you can send in your questions for her to answer live. Of course, we've already had people yes. emailing, texting, calling, sending in questions. And one of the biggest things that they're asking, Diana, is help. I'm stuck in the house. I'm quarantined. <laughs> And I'm going crazy on snacks. Yes. They don't know what to eat. So help yes. us, please. Yes, so let's talk about snacks really quick. Um, it's really hard when you're stuck in the house. If you're not working from home and you're just home or you're not that busy, you know, there are uh, so many things in the pantry. If you have kids at home, there's so many unhealthy snacks and there's so many healthy snacks. But when we get bored or idle, or watching TV, we tend to go for what kind of snacks? Yeah, the bad ones. The bad yeah. ones. So I, I'm guilty of, you know, grabbing for the, the goldfish or the little brownie bites. But I wanted to talk to you about some of the things you can do while you are at home. Uh, one thing is if you're typically working, you can keep that same structure as if you're going to work. I right. know this sounds crazy. I share this with Cece. I'm working from home right now, and I'm not used to it with my two kids. Mm -hmm. I actually pack my lunch bag as if I were going to work. That way, it prevents me from over-snacking. So I pack my, well, I make my breakfast. I pack my mid-morning snack, yeah. my lunch, my mid-afternoon snack, and then I have dinner with my family as usual. And so, really, that's the best advice I can give you. Of course, um, stick with your high-protein snacks. Get your fiber in, your fruits, your veggies, things like hummus, things like snacking peppers, which I know you love your veggies. Ooh, yes. <laughs> um, so those are great. Be careful with the nuts. It's easy to over -consume consume nuts, stick to your serving size, and what's on the nutrition label is really the best advice I can give you for snacking at home. And water, water, water. Drink your water. Yeah, drink your water. Um, 88.20, right? So what I mean by that is, okay, if you're used to going to work at 8 o'clock in the morning, then you, you're going to have to get your breakfast yes. in. And, and like you said, I think the best thing was just what you said was act like you're still going to work. Yes. And so one of the, let, let's get to some of these questions. Yeah. So Kim says, what healthy snacks can we give the kids during this time? Because a lot of parents are like, my kids don't know how to not go to the refrigerator. So help us. What things can we give our kids? So um, parents, I would say try as much as you can at leading Things that my my daughter loves is she just started eating strawberries. It took me forever to get her to eat strawberries, wow. but I, I cut it up and added a little whipped cream for her, just a little bit, probably about one tablespoon, okay. and she loved that. So she's getting her snack, you know, a healthy snack, strawberries, with just a little bit of sweetness, which is the the whipped cream. Um, another 
really quick food demo. So we have here, um, I'll wear my gloves. Nice. Just, just in, yes, in just in case. <laughs> Are we six feet apart? We're enough feet <laughs> apart, right? <laughs> Friends can stand closer. So friends, friends don't let feet interfere with friends. There we go. There you so go. <laughs> don't don't mind the black gloves. Um, so here we have a rice cake. Now, mm -hmm. whenever I tell people about rice cake, mm -hmm. they're like, "Oh my gosh, it's so bland. It's so nasty." And I would tend to agree, just eating it bland. Um, however, we're gonna make this fun, and your kids can also snack on these uh, if they like peanut butter and banana. So. Mm. Okay. This is for the adults and the children. So here we have a rice cake. We have a banana, about a medium-sized banana. And then we have natural peanut butter. Awesome. Um, so you can get this anywhere. Natural <laughs> peanut butter. So it says natural, creamy, but really the most natural peanut butter is the one they grind for you. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk a little bit here. So one tablespoon of peanut butter. Now, who measures peanut butter? I don't. I put peanut I, butter on everything. I do. Okay. So, <laughs> so then, but, but, but the reason why we're saying measure is because of the control thing. Yes. Okay. It's so easy to over consume yeah. foods if we're not paying attention to labels. And so I'm That's big good. on reading labels That's and good. I suggest that everyone get used to reading labels. Um, the main thing here is looking for the serving size, which tells you how much you're supposed to have and the calories you relate to the serving size. So table, the peanut butter, it's two tablespoons, 190 calories. Mm -hmm. And so- I want all those calories. So right. <laughs> Y'all know I'm gonna eat this rice cake. Yes, with she this will. peanut butter on here. On now while she's doing that, this is what I do wanna say, cause Diana brought up a great point and this is something that my mom taught me. Shout out to the best momager. Um, she taught me how to read labels. And what she would say is if you can't pronounce it, it probably should not go in your body. And so I literally, over the course of the years, I've been training for over 12 years, and you know, clients always say, how do I know what to eat? I say, if you can't pronounce it, don't eat it. And she used to say, "Yes, okay, if you pick up a jar of peanut butter and the first ingredient is sugar, why is it sugar when it's supposed to be peanut butter? Exactly. So the first ingredient should be what it is. So if it's peanut butter, the first ingredient should be peanut butter. Yep. So she's got my rice cake here. This looks good. Okay. So here we go. We just have a really simple snack. Mm -hmm. You can see it was really quick. Rice cake, peanut butter, one tablespoon, mm -hmm. and I did half a banana. And so typically for your snacks, you want to keep it um, 200 calories max to 250. Don't go over 250 for a snack because then it becomes a meal. Oh. And so this is a Say great... That one more time yes. for people like me who always eat over 250 calories worth of snacks. Well, this is more for um, people who are really tracking their calories okay. using like MyFitnessPal or some kind of food tracking method. For snatch, try not to go over 250 calories because then it becomes a meal. Okay. And so this right here, 35 calories for the rice cake, okay. 80 calories, and about 50 calories. Um, great for pre-workout, great for post-workout as well. So that's well. about 160 calories that I'm going to enjoy right now. Yes. So I'm going to let you move on to the next question while I eat this rice cake. Okay. So a lot <laughs> of people are trying to stay, they are trying to stay on a regimen. And so one question that one of our viewers, Regina, asked was, on a 1,200 calorie diet, and I'm quarantined, how do I spread that out? Because 1,200 calories is not a lot if you're trying to eat three meals. Yes. So how can help her? Yes. Yeah, so uh, great question, Regina. And so I'm, I'm going to touch a little bit on the 1,200 calories. Um, really, <laughs> Cece's distracting me. I, I want some. Um, really, 1,200 calories, and I'm going to be very general here. You know, calories is not a one-size-fit-all type of deal. Now, it depends on did you choose these calories for yourself? Did your physician give you these calories to consume? That depends. Now, if you chose these calories for yourself without the recommendation of a physician or a dietitian, it gets kind of tricky because typically for women, um, we don't recommend 1,200 calories, right? unless you're like five feet, you know, kind of on the more petite side, because there's not much you can get in with 1,200 calories. Right. Uh, and so if you are on 1,200 calorie diet, 
it and you are hungry all the time and you're having a <laughs> hard time, you probably need to bump up your calories because that means you're not getting in enough nutrition, which can also slow your metabolism. Especially if you're working out. Especially if you're working out, if you're working out. calories is not going to work. It's, yeah. I, I think more so what what it means for, for those people who are trying to stick to that, that calorie intake is you got to watch what you're eating yes. because you know you would have to eat a whole lot of kale salad to go over 1200 calories yes <laughs> so if you're eating the right foods that are not high in fat high in calories then you can eat more okay let's move on to something that i know people struggled with when they weren't quarantined <laughs> Is this water business? Water, okay. yes. How much water? Y'all can see this is my water right here. It says Satara's water bottle. I'm Satara. This is my water bottle. Okay. Mm -hmm. So talk about water. How much water? Um, can, can they put stuff? People like crystal. Like they're putting meals and crystal lights. Can you please tap on that? Please? Yes. So it's a question I get a lot from my clients is water. And no one likes to hear this answer. <laughs> the amount of water you should drink is half your body weight in ounces okay so if you don't know how much you weigh step on that scale tomorrow morning uh -oh. um, in your birthday suit because that is the most accurate weight and divide that weight in half and that half in ounces is the amount of water you should consume and so you, you know you've all heard about the eight eight ounce glasses per day that was the old recommendation so now it's half speaking right. if you're exercising yes, and sweating mm -hmm. it's even more water they typically say eight ounces for every 30 minutes of exercising wow yeah more okay. or less yes so so one thing that i want to add is the thing i love about bottles like these is when you're someone who is say you're i'll take my weight 154 pounds mm -hmm. i typically drink about 90 ounces a day because of my workout output exactly bottles like this that tell you it's 32 ounces I know I have to fill this up three times yes the cool thing about this and I know you love this is it has a little diffuser thing so yes infuser infuser right mm -hmm. so I can put mint leaves what's what's good to put in water to give people because people grown folks <laughs> <laughs> cannot just drink straight water. They yes. gotta put crystallite and meal and cannot mix it with some Gatorade. Yeah. Help us, please. And I know that's um, one thing that people struggle with a lot, but um, you can add fresh fruit to your water, mm -hmm. strawberries, cucumber, some lemon, um, add some mint. Those are all great things to add to your water. You want to take it easy on the crystallite, the meal. You want to you want to take it easy on the artificial sweetener because. If you are a diabetic, um, your body does not know the difference between artificial sweetener and regular sweetener. So it may spike your glucose the same way. So just as much as you can, stick to water. There's nothing better than plain water. Good. And because you said diabetic, I had someone write in, Andrea wanted to know, for a diabetic, what are some of the best fruits to eat and how should they ration out their nuts? Maybe something like this you think yeah so um so let me talk about the uh fruit question first andrea was that andrea? Yes, andrea so andrea great question it's a question i get often so for diabetics you want to stick to the lower sugar fruits and so there's something called the glycemic index or glycemic load which tells you how high a fruit or a food item is on that glycemic index mm -hmm. so lower sugar fruits are your berries all your berries strawberries blueberries raspberries did I miss a berry 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 berries all berries no blueberries no berry punch though no if berry I get punch wind, if any of my clients put in fruit punch in their shakes or something we do not have punch. and and no sugar on your fruit so this is yeah yes. no no yes. sugar so um the higher sugar fruits are your pineapple banana okay. um grapes mm -hmm. grapes are like the candy of, of wow. fruits and so people love grapes but did you know you only get to eat 15 grapes as a serving size and that's pretty pretty high up there in calories and my so, mom just passed out yeah, yeah pretty much she <laughs> definitely eats more than 15 grapes at a time <laughs> and so um it, it's easy to over consume things like fruits but just understand here people that it doesn't matter if a food item is healthy or unhealthy. If you overconsume it, it's Good. bad. Good point. Same thing with water, okay? So moderation and balance is the key to everything.
thing. And so um, here, Cece brought the snack packet. It's classic fruit and nut trail mix. And um, I, I like, for diabetics, I like recommending snacks that are more high protein. So sticking to nuts, unsalted, unsalted, okay. unsalted nuts. What, what about wasabi soy almonds? Yeah. <laughs> My mom just passed out again. <laughs> so here's the thing, you know, I don't want you all to feel like you can't enjoy the foods you love. Mm -hmm. But have the discipline to stick to the portion sizes. If That's it good. says quarter cup of wasabi soy almonds, mm -hmm. stick to your quarter cup. Take your scoop, pour it in a little snack baggie, and then there you go. Um, if you can't do that, then don't bite at all. <laughs> right, there you go. And I think, too, um, and I believe you would agree with me in this because of, you know, what we see. It's not that people are just over-consuming they're also not healthy with it. So yes. you can over consume, but then the other issue is you may not be drinking enough water, or you're right. not eating your serving size of green vegetables, and you're not getting exercise. So yes. that leads me to the next question. Uh, Lisa wants to know, what are some of the best snacks to curb that late night hunger? So it's yes. like 10.30 and I'm <laughs> up watching the Golden Girls. What do people watch at ten thirty? I don't know people. People whatever are watching a lot of Netflix these days. Yes. Okay. Yes. So maybe they're watching Game Changers on Netflix at ten thirty. Can they eat a snack? Absolutely. So I'm sure everyone has heard um, people say, "Oh, don't eat after six p.m. because you're going to gain weight." <laughs> it's not um, what time you eat; it's what you eat at that time. So just make that very clear to everyone. If you decide at 10 p.m. you're going to have a bowl of cereal with whole milk, that's a no-no. If you decide you're going to have um, plain, non-fat Greek yogurt with some blueberries, then that's the way to go. Hi. You are hurting my mother. I am right? a <laughs> that is a late night to go snack. Cereal. I'm sorry, Melinda. <laughs> but a lot of people do the same thing because they feel like, oh, it's just cereal. I can have a bowl. And especially if it's special K or, you know, like honey bunches of oats, they yeah. feel like they can eat that. And, no, and, and I'll, no. I'll admit, my guilty pleasure is special K chocolate delight. Mm. And let's be real here. Who really measures out their cereal? You know, because if you really measured out your cereal, you wouldn't have much in that bowl. Mm -hmm. And so I would say go for something that's more filling. Um, maybe plain non-fat Greek yogurt is not your snack of choice at 10 p.m. He's <laughs> like, nope, not my snack of choice. But other things you can do, popcorn. I was just about to yep. say, popcorn. What light, about popcorn? Light popcorn. You not can, movie theater, but Not movie popcorn. theater. Darn. So a lot of people love the skinny pop or those kind of popcorns. You can eat up to six cups. And oh, wow. it still be about 150 calories. Wow. And you can go for nuts, the same rice cake with the peanut butter, skip okay. the banana if it's late night. Okay. And um, sometimes we think we're hungry, but we're just bored. And so. is, isn't it also true that sometimes it's not hunger, it's dehydration? Yes. So always so drink that. water yeah. first. And then if you're still hungry, of course, go for the snack. And stay away from the Cocoa Puffs in the pantry. Like, you stay away. <laughs> oh, Cocoa Puffs. So we found your nemesis. Okay, now here's the big question. You being in the health industry, a lot of people are on medications. And being on medications in quarantine and maybe not able to work out is like a double whammy. So what are some things people should be doing as far as eating, working out to help keep their medications under control? Yeah, uh, are you f referring to like medications that cause weight gain or what medications? Or, or medications, uh, Lisa and Regina wanted to know if their medications cause maybe like a hormonal imbalance and they're not able to get to the gym right now or their schedule is just hectic. What are things they shouldn't be eating that may throw off their meds or things that they could be eating to help yes, stay in balance? So, uh, you know, not just for women, but for men and women, you know, when we're at home and things that you want to stay on track with is think about the colors of the rainbow. That's mm. your fruits, your vegetables. Um, when it comes to your grains, we have brown rice high in fiber and so for diabetics again stick with things like brown rice and quinoa because they are high fiber they keep you full longer mm -hmm. and help keep your it, it won't spike your blood sugar levels as high as white rice would okay so we have brown rice 
rice. Um, a lot of people don't like to cook brown rice from scratch because they say it's kind of rubbery. Mm -hmm. Uncle Ben's microwavable brown rice is actually not a bad choice. There's nothing but brown rice, okay? And then we have quinoa. Um, a lot of people are still not getting, still getting used to quinoa. I know you love it, and I, I love it. I even make dessert out of quinoa. So if you want to explore, always go to Dr. Google and um, <laughs> explore recipes and just experiment. This is now more than ever. This is the time to experiment, to try new things at That's home. Mm -hmm. um, so, of course, stick with your, your lean meat. So salmon. Yes, you what know about things. Lamb? lamb is more of a gamey type meat, okay. red meat. So just be careful. I would say red meat in moderation. Yeah, yes. and we're talking about people who are dealing with medication that could cause hormonal imbalance. Now the thing I'll say about quinoa for y'all who love grits, you can eat quinoa. I'm yes, just gonna leave yes. that right there. Okay, <laughs> and don't go putting cheese in it. Um, okay, next question. So you brought up the rice. Yes. So I had some questions. Um, Ozzy actually asked. Rice makes me feel bloated. What are some alternatives to meals? You know, when you're eating beans, a lot of people feel like, okay, if I have beans, I need to have rice. But other than quinoa, what else can they use to substitute that? Oh, my gosh. There's so many grains. Um, if you go on wholegrainscouncil.com, there are multiple types of grains. There's, besides quinoa and brown rice, there is farro, there is um, buckwheat, there's barley, there is, couscous. oh my gosh, couscous. They mm -hmm. have regular couscous, whole grain couscous. Um, getting into the pastas, they have now, Barilla has a protein plus pasta, there's whole wheat pasta, mm -hmm. there's black bean spaghetti pasta, Gluten chickpea pasta. pasta. So <laughs> there's literally everything to... Um, match your dietary preferences so you know i know that you like the gluten-free mm -hmm. and so there there's a lot and you know people think it's expensive but you know we go to solomon's um aldi yeah. get things on sale walmart and so i i feel like if you really want to make it happen you, you can. can it does yeah. take a little effort but you can make it happen. And you've seen the other side of the spectrum. So you're either going to pay to eat good food or you're going to pay for medications yes. to help control the, the bad stuff that you're putting yes. in your body. Um, let's talk about, um, someone asked a question, Grace asked a question about air fryers. There's this like, there's this concept that if you cook with an air fryer, it's healthier. If you want to fry chicken, make french fries, do others, do it in the air fryer. Is that a fad? I have an air fryer, okay. so um, <laughs> I would, so, you know, it all depends on, on what you're cooking. So if you're doing fries, of course, it's going to be less fat than if you're frying it in oil because you're not putting any oil in the air fryer. So in that sense, yes, it is less fat in terms of the calories in the fries, it's the same amount of calories. There you go. Fries and so if you were to bake it, it's just as good as if you're doing it in the, the air, air fryer. fryer. Yes. Okay. So let's get to our healthcare workers, right? Yes. Which we love. Thank you guys yes. for Thank sacrificing you so yourself during this time. But the reality of the situation they're in, they're working 10, 14 hours a day. Um, Grace, who we know yes. that works at Baptist Health, she wanted to know, I am exhausted at yeah. the end of my work day. I have no motivation to work out. What are some things that she can be doing, especially food-wise, to make sure that when she comes back and starts training with me again, <laughs> that I don't have to beat off those stubborn extra pounds? So that's that's kind of tough because I want to be I want to be realistic here. Mm -hmm. You know, you're working those long hours um, tirelessly. The the last thing on your mind is is food. However, you know, as much as you can, try to let it be the first thing on your mind. If you cannot exercise, I'm sure she's getting a lot of steps in mm -hmm. there at Baptist North ED. I know <laughs> that for sure. And so that counts as activity. You Good. know, if you feel like you're sitting too long, get up and walk around. Also keeping snacks on deck, you know, um, snacks to give you energy so you don't feel so lethargic later at night. You know, don't go killing yourself and try to go work out for an hour when you get home because you need your rest as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And so in the most realistic sense, I'll say, you know, try to walk as much as you can on your job, hydrate and get your snacks in. Make sure you're eating. Awesome. Okay. Now, another question we had, Kenza wanted to know, multivitamins 
multivitamins. I don't know what I just said. <laughs> multivitamins, are they necessary? If so, what do you recommend? This whole fad about, I mean, you can find supplements for a toenail that just fell off last week. I mean, there, there are supplements, <laughs> minerals for everything. What are some healthy supplements and vitamins that people should look for if they're trying to maintain a healthy, active lifestyle? So, um, you know, taking multivitamins are not a bad idea. What I will recommend is a great question for their physician okay. to see which ones are the best ones because I can make a pill put dirt in it and tell you <laughs> that it's great for blood pressure, okay? Ooh, that was good. Because not everything is um, approved by the FDA, so you have to be really careful what you're buying. So don't get sucked in those infomercials late at night when you're bored and you're just like, oh, maybe this will help me. Please have a conversation with your physician. That's not my area of expertise, but taking a multivitamin is not a bad idea. Be careful with the cheaper ones. Like I said, you could be just swallowing dirt. You never know. But <laughs> Red clay dirt from South Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. So let's talk about, um, we had a couple questions. And no, this is not a question I had, but it sounds like something I would ask. If you have a high metabolism and you have a hard time gaining weight, what are some things that you can eat um, and I know you're big on macros, micros, protein counts. So kind of explain that because people are confused about that and they need some good yes, advice so on that. I actually brought a visual for everyone because macros are not as complicated as we think. Okay. When we think about macros, three things, your carbs, your protein, and your fat. Those are your macros, and every one of those has specific energy units, okay? So, for example, rice, oatmeal, bread, um, peanut butter, apple, these are carbs. So, these are your first macros. Mm -hmm. Protein, peanut butter, and a fat. Um, you have chickpea, which is protein and a carb. You have your rice cakes, which is a carb. And so... You can manipulate your macros depending on what your fitness goals are. If you want to gain muscle, you can manipulate your macros. If you want to um, gain weight, if you want to lose weight, if you want to maintain, you can manipulate your macros. And so they have tons of free macro calculators mm -hmm. um, that you can find if you just do a search. Also. When you find your macro kind of um, your level, your level of macros, mm -hmm. you can put those in My Fitness Pal, which is a free app. food tracking app, and and you can manipulate those as well. So that way, when you're tracking your food, it's a little easier to stick to your macros. But when doing your macros, it's essential for you to weigh, measure your food because it's easy to overestimate. And so I brought my scale here. Mm -hmm. Um, this scale was really affordable from Amazon. I think it was like 10 bucks and you can weigh everything on there, but I have really quick here. This is, I mean, I found this online. So you have here, what the heck is a macro? So basically your carbohydrates, your protein, fats, and then there's alcohol, which we're going to talk about in a second. And, um, so just breaks it down for you, you know, counting macros, how do we count macros? How do we know how many carbohydrates are in a food? What do you do? Go back to that nutrition label on that food item, okay? Gotcha. If, for example, an apple, right, a small apple. So this, by the way, is a serving size for an apple. Ooh, Not geez. the big ones, like that's <laughs> almost the size of my face, but this, the ones that Panera gives you, that's the serving size for your apple, all right? So um, it doesn't necessarily have to be an organic apple to be this size. So a little apple like this, how do we know how many calories? You can just do a Google search. How many calories in a small apple? I think it's about 35 or yeah. something. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and it'll tell you. And so also this website, Fruits and Veggies More Matters, it has every calorie content for every fruit and vegetable you can think of, okay? Now, in terms of the scale... Okay, let's let's hurt and help some. Yeah. Some people are not going to like the sound of this. When it comes to weighing my food, what am I weighing and why? So things that are hard to weigh in a measuring cup, chicken, 
right? Yeah. Um, and it's important for you to, if you're counting your macros, specifically if you're counting calories, to weigh your chicken. It may tell you, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. the recommended serving size for chicken is four ounces, right? Mm -hmm. Let's talk mm -hmm. about chicken. However, if your protein grams is is it if it depends on what your macro is it may right. be a little bit higher maybe six ounces or for men eight ounces you know men that are trying to really bulk up mm -hmm. right but let's go back to what is the recommended serving size the general population four ounces of chicken breast so if you think about four ounces okay you remember Phone. Yes. Are you pointing out anyone? Okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> we're Android, team Android over here. Okay, um, I'm team, team iPhone. Um, so this is the serving size for chicken. So also you can use the palm of your hands, which is really great because CC and I don't have the same size hands or palm. And so the, the size hands of the chicken breast she will eat will be slightly different than what I will consume, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a disadvantage I have for being shorter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dad. So, um, so that's your serving size, and pretty much, you know, weighing your meat on a scale is really important. You, of course, will not put the raw meat on the scale. You put it on a plate, tear, and then you'll be able to take the, the ounces okay. of that. You just heard a whole lot of people that have been eating that Popeye's chicken sandwich. Because <laughs> I guarantee you that thing is not four ounces. It's probably more like 16. Probably. Okay? probably. From a not-so-real chicken. But I digress. So let's talk about intermittent fasting. Okay? Yes. Now, I know you're not, I know you're not big on it. I, I like it, generally speaking, for people who need control. People who are like, I'm eating at 10 o'clock if I'm hungry. Well... If your schedule's 10 to 6, you got that window eating it. But as far as intermittent fasting with losing weight, helping to maintain, especially during quarantine time, what are your recommendations? So um, one thing I won't do is I won't knock anyone who is on a specific diet because I feel like if it's working for you, then that's all that matters. I have a lot of clients who um, are on different diets. It's, you know, they try keto, intermittent uh. fasting, you know, who am I to tell you what to do or not to do? But the question I always ask, is this something that is sustainable? Yes. Is it something That's you good. can keep up for the rest of your life? Mm -hmm. um, if the answer is no, then you really need to go back to the drawing board and, and take your time with, with those things. Uh, those are the questions I always, always ask my clients. And and if your diet is eliminating any of the food groups, that's a red flag as well. So that's like keto. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> I said it cheated. That's all I'm gonna say. Kind of in the diet world, there's so many diets. Um, I've studied different types of diets, and there's even a cookie diet. If you think about what dieting is, cookie diet. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so think about it, right, CC? Oh, if geez. You were to eat cookies all day, right? <laughs> what kind? Whatever cookies you want, right? Okay. Okay. But say your cookies, the amount of cookies you were eating in a day, still reduce your calorie intake by 500, right? That's a deficit. Creating a deficit is how we achieve weight loss, mm -hmm. right? A deficit meaning either we are reducing our calories or we're exercising more. more. Mm -hmm. So you have to look at that balance. And here's the thing with the fad diets. Um, people love it because we as human beings are extremely impatient. Mm -hmm. We want it yesterday. So we don't want to hear about, you know, track your food. And yes, you can eat the things you love, but in moderation. But I'm telling you, for those of you who um, are stubborn, because I know I am, I am telling you that, yes, it takes longer, but you will be more successful doing yeah. it that way. And it'll sustain a lot longer. It'll sus yeah. Yes. So if, if the answer to the question is yes to that question of, can you keep this up? Can you sustain this? You know, um, or are you excluding carbs to the point where you want to bite your husband's head off? Then you should probably rethink 
that diet. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's let's knock down some of these other questions. So people over 40 and over 50 who are struggling with those last 10 to 15 pounds, um, we're not going to talk about diets and tricks and everything, but you're an avid uh, uh, fitness. You work out avidly. So mm -hmm. what are some things that you can recommend that you have found that have helped with maybe getting off those stubborn 10 to 15 pounds? So, um, you know, the older we get as women, the harder it is. You know, we hear it all the time. It is true. The older we get, the harder it is. The younger you are, your metabolism is just like a spring chicken. So we have to start experimenting with different types of exercises try everything you know your, your cardio your strength training some hit workouts some plyo workouts and of course remember your flexibility and stretching exercises if i don't mention that cc will kill me because she's big on stretching but it is really important mm -hmm. especially for women and men as we age so every type of workout um you, you have to think about the fit principle, frequency, intensity, time, and type. If you've been doing the same thing for the last six months and you have not seen any change, it's time to go back and revise your workout routine and add some challenges. If you've been doing 30 minutes on the treadmill every other day, add some weights in, add 15 more minutes of strength training, you know, get that heart rate up, you know, get the metabolism going. So that's really, the recommendation I would give at a personal trainer at a personal trainer and the <laughs> thing about that is listen we will I was thinking about this earlier when it comes to the foods we put in our body and you know how we think about our health and fitness so right. you will buy Victoria's Secret and you know you have to wash with certain soap because your skin's so sensitive <laughs> and you have to wear certain makeup because your eyebrows have to look just right if you can care that much about what goes on the outside, you should really care even more about what goes on the inside. And so sometimes that may mean getting the help of a professional that knows a little bit more than you do. Yes. Okay, let's run through these snacks we have on the table yes. because I know there's some people who are like, can you get to the wine? Yeah, okay. yeah. So we're going to get to that. So let's start from your end, kind of work our way over and kind of just explain why we brought some of these examples. Yeah, so really quickly, I'm you know, the um, these are from, from my pantry because, and, and there are, they are carbs, and people ask all the time, um, are carbs good? Are they bad? You know, I can tell you right now, carbs are not the devil. It depends on what type of carbs you're consuming. You want to make sure whatever type of carbohydrate it is, that it is nutritionally whole for you. And so here I have sandwich thins. Um, these are about 150 calories, great substitute for like a burger bun. I have here Pepperidge Farm thin sliced bread. So if you like bread, but you don't wanna do the higher calorie bread because you can get the Pepperidge Farm bread that's one slice for 130 calories. So this one, you can have two slices for 140. Mm -hmm. And of course your brown rice, your oatmeal. Um, okay, so. For people who do not like breakfast or don't like to eat breakfast, you know, I kind of have to work with people um, at their level. I do not force anyone to do anything based on my routine. So for people who are not breakfast eaters, I would say whatever time you can get in a quick snack in the morning time frame, Belvita is not a bad idea. Um, it is great you know, great nutritious um, snack, and it gives you steady energy for four hours. <laughs> and this is not a paid commercial for Belvita, no, but not. Belvita called us, okay? So <laughs> the thing that I want to point out is she does not have the Belvita that is filled with chocolate in the middle. No. The little two cookie sandwiches, because I know y'all was like, yes, go get the Belvita. No. Not the little <laughs> cookie chocolate one. Okay, these are the just the four wafers, and what flavor is this? Honey wheat. A golden Honey wheat. golden oat, sorry. Yes, golden, golden oat. oat, yeah. Okay, so just wanted to point that out. Okay, keep going. What else? All we right, have? so then another thing here that is popular um, in the over snacking section is peanuts, okay? So how do we eat peanuts? We typically just do this, pour oh, and pour and pour. You want some CC? Okay. We just pour and pour and pour and oh I think that is about it. And then we put it back in the pantry and then oh that peanut's so good. I want to go back for more and then we pour and pour and pour. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so if you ever explored a nutrition label on peanut butter, I mean peanuts, it is thirty-nine pieces. <laughs> yes. 
170 calories. But think about it. Somebody just fell out at home. Yeah, somebody mm -hmm. just like, never mind, I'm not watching her anymore. If you had five handfuls of peanuts, you probably sure. already consumed close to 500 calories. You might Ooh. as well go to Five Guys and get a burger. But don't do that, especially <laughs> if you're one of my clients. I'd rather you eat the peanuts. Oh, gosh. And, and we can talk about fast food a little bit. But, okay, um, let's keep going. Yes. So one of my favorites um, is garbanzo beans. You've heard it as chickpeas. Um, also, you know, it's what they make hummus out of. So this is also a really great bean, high fiber. There's so many different things you can do with it. So you're probably wondering, is canned mm. beans good to eat? So not everyone has time to put beans in a crock pot, dry beans in a crock pot and wait for it. So if you are busy, but you want to make sure you get your fiber in, just put it in a strainer, rinse it off, and then do whatever you want with it, okay? Rinse all the stuff that makes it... All the all the water and all that, yeah, whatever liquid stuff. that is, okay? Now, these are my favorite. This is my box. We're not going to eat into it now. So that's fine. But she's going to talk about Lara Bar. Yeah, so there are so many different um, snack bars, energy bars, whatever you want to call it, okay? And what Cece mentioned in the beginning about what her mom taught her, if you cannot pronounce the things in the ingredient list you probably you no, not probably you should not be eating it if you mm -hmm. can't pronounce it don't eat it or don't buy it and so Lair Bar only has very few ingredients so this one is peanut butter chocolate chip mm -hmm. it only has four ingredients the, and the first one yeah the, is the, dates the first one is dates yeah. and so you know which gives it the sweetness and um, then not go on dates, guys, for you single people. <laughs> dates like the fruit date. Just wanted to put, I'm like, some people are like, dates? We can go on dates? Yeah. yeah. And then there's peanuts, semi sweet chocolate chips, and then just a little bit of sea salt, okay? Mm -hmm. And so the, the least amount of ingredients, the better it is for you. Yes. Okay. All right, let's talk about these, you know, people who are working out and they're at home, so they're, you know, going to grab Gatorades, telling the kids to go drink a Gatorade drinking vitamin water like it's water yeah and it's not yeah so it depends on um okay by no means am i saying these are terrible for you I'm but terrible. but they are bad if you um are not exercising to that extent so people who need the full calorie gatorade the full calorie vitamin water we're talking athletes okay we're talking training like crazy hours a day yeah like phelps right and Keep not if you're 50 and you used to have a great jump shot this no. is you still no. have a great jump shot okay so and some yeah. people just drink gatorade because they like it um if you're not exercising and you're not losing those electrolytes you don't necessarily need to have Gatorade, just stick to your water. Mm -hmm. If you really want to have Gatorade every now and again, maybe treat yourself to the G0, which is a zero calorie one. Okay. Um, but another alternative too is coconut water. Mm -hmm. It's really, really good for hydration, guys. And so if you're putting in a really tough workout, you know, drink some coconut water if you like coconut water. I've had people ask me about um, chocolate milk because at the end of my, races you know my um my 5ks and my half marathons people they usually have chocolate milk at the end mm -hmm. don't drink chocolate milk after your workout if you're doing a 30 minute workout um it doesn't matter the intensity if you're running like 13 miles or a marathon then yes of course right. chocolate water is good to get that energy and right. kind of reboot okay last I mean, thing chocolate milk chocolate, chocolate water milk, chocolate, chocolate water. somebody's going to try to make chocolate <laughs> water too just because all right let's talk about seasonings because this is big some people are putting lowry's on everything okay so let's talk about these seasonings we have here what can you what advice can you give on how to season so um this is a salt free seasoning blend and so typically i recommend this for people who um are struggling with balancing their blood pressure keeping it within range so my, my people who are hypertensive um if they have a hard time controlling the amount of salt they they cook with then i would say you know, go with the salt-free seasoning blend. It's not always the best taste. Some people, you're either on one end or the other. Some mm -hmm. people really love it. Some people don't. For those that do not love it, I say cook with your natural herbs, basil, parsley, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, and, and use your onion and garlic. Mm -hmm. 
And oh, Himalayan pink salt. So there was a fad. This when this came yes, out a couple yes. years ago. Yes, yes. So right? people are like, um, oh, I don't do table salt. I only do pink Himalayan salt. So um, I'm sorry to burst your bubble. Salt is salt across the board. Even if you overconsume it, it's so bad for you. So here's the thing. Here's what is different, right? Okay. Because these grains are bigger, you don't have to put as much. Okay. Because the particles are bigger in Himalayan right. sea salt, you don't have to put as much table salt as you would. Gotcha. Yeah. And this is a grinder, guys. So, yes. so get a grinder. And, and, well, the, and I feel like this tastes, um, it gives your food a better flavor. It does. Than, yeah. than table than regular salt. salt. So, yeah. Not terrible. Um, okay, this is something I love. Um, Trilogy, just talk about, you know, flaxseed, chia seed, hemp seed, the benefits. Yeah, so, um, so flax, chia, hemp. You hear omega fatty acids, which is really good for your HDL cholesterol to improve it. The higher it is, the better it is. And so things like flax, chia, hemp, you put in your salads, your smoothies, if you're doing muffins, mm -hmm. pancakes, oatmeal. I mean... She makes these really good chia bars. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll tell you guys how to place your order in at the end of the show. Okay. Last thing, for those who want to blame everything on the a a a a a alcohol. Yes. Okay. And so. Tell us about this red wine. All right. So here I just have a typical red wine that I got from Aldi. I am a wine drinker. I won't even try to put up a front. Uh, I have two kids and sometimes I just need a break. Okay. <laughs> and so a lot of women are, are ask about red wine. And so um, the, the serving size for wine for women is about four to five ounces okay so Ooh. yes i and think my sister just hit the floor some of her. you will wow. say this is just one swallow and that's it right and you mothers will love this my wine glass says surviving motherhood one sip at a time because that's literally how i feel about um being a mother but here's the thing it's not that i'm saying you cannot have your wine if you're really tracking your calories in your food log if you have eight ounces of wine, just make sure you log that and then just make sure you remove something from from your day. That's all. But if, if you have eight ounces, you're going to have to measure that because yes. people do not know what eight ounces is. I mean, and people easily go through a bottle of wine. Easily. In, in one night. Or, especially during a quarantine. Or one hour. Or, yeah. Especially yeah. during a quarantine, especially when and you're stressed yeah 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 and but one thing is because we did have miss carla and we'll finish up here yes she asked with all these people in the house i'm having a hard time sleeping yes could she drink a couple ounces of red wine well i wouldn't recommend to drink wine just for the purpose of falling asleep <laughs> there's so many natural um sleep aids like sleepy time tea mm -hmm melatonin and dream water um and there's the melatonin pills of course and dream water is one of my favorites they sell it in the checkout aisle um at Publix is where i've seen it the most but sleepy time tea there's the regular one and then there's sleepy time tea extra mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and chamomile tea chamomile is it's to, calming to yes you and calm yes you. or what i love to do is take some essential oil lavender oil put it on the bottom of your feet put on some hot socks and yeah, That'll help or a take a nice warm shower or bath and just try to relax, listen to some nice soothing music without words, some meditation music, and just try to relax, and, and I, I think you'll be fine. Yeah. And I wish we had more time. We may have to bring you back later on because you mentioned meditation, and that's something that you have taught me to do, and it helps. Mm -hmm. If people want to get in touch with you, if they want to order some of your chia seed bars, I'll probably just put her to work. Lord have mercy. She can cook, though, okay? Y'all saw me eat that whole rice cake. How do they get in touch with you? So um, I, I do not have Facebook at the moment, um, but you can get in touch with me on Instagram, and my name is at Mrs. Bill Cat. And so will we put that up somewhere? Yeah, we will, okay. definitely. Yep. Okay. Yep. So, yeah. And if they, you guys, if you want recipes, if you have more questions, I know I didn't get to everyone's questions. Um, there were just so many. So thank you guys for participating. Of course, you know how to follow me here on Get In The Game. You can catch us live every Tuesday. But don't forget this Saturday, our special pre-draft show with DeAndre Johnson. He's from right here in Jacksonville, Florida. He's here right head to the, the draft. So, oh, wow. And we're going to have a great show, have some great time here on Saturday. Listen, you guys, stay 
as you stay quarantined, stay sane. Yes. Don't kill each other. Just, yes. just find your healthy <laughs> snacks and, and eat good. And catch us here on Saturday at 5 p.m. Thank you so much to my producers, Mr. Stefan Petty, Mr. Allen, the best momager in the world, Melinda Henry, and my stylist, Barbara Jake. And we thank you guys for tuning in. If you or anyone you know would like to be a sponsor or partner of Get In The Game, you can reach us at getinthegameshow at gmail.com. You guys have a great eating evening. I almost said eating because I'm getting ready to go eat. And we'll catch you guys on Saturday. Have a good night.